Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be going over two main topics. The first one is going to be what happened to the Blender game engine, and the second one is going to be going over all the alternative open source game engines available. So it's been about a year since I made a Blender game engine related video, and the main reason for that is basically just that the Blender game engine has been steadily declining over the last few sort of months, um, to the point where it has been fully removed by the Blender Foundation. So in April this year, the Blender Foundation had to make the tough decision to completely cut the Blender game engine and the Blender internal render engine out of Blender to allow the rest of Blender and all of the code that was left to move to a new modern standard and give it all sorts of new and awesome capabilities. So these include being able to do things like EV, real-time rendering, um, lots and lots of new cool things and features, the drawing looks a lot nicer, and just basically all the sort of modern things that technology these days allows you to do. So before, because of the old code, Blender couldn't really upgrade too much because then the old part of it would sort of go out of date and break, so they were sort of just limiting themselves the entire time. So now with this upgrade, they've changed from OpenGL 2 to OpenGL 3. That basically opens the way to allow them to do a lot more different things and basically removes any sort of old prescribed methods that OpenGL 2 was using before. Now the founder of the Blender Foundation, Tond, he has recognized the sort of potential and the capabilities of the game engine and he has said that there is a replacement for the Blender game engine currently in the works. And it isn't just any old random developer thrown into it, it's one of the original developers that created the Blender game engine in the first place. So hopefully this will sort of go somewhere good and we'll get a nice result from it. But again, it isn't really expected to have much and it's mainly meant to be more of a sort of interactive mode to let you um, sort of run custom events and physics and that sort of thing. But it's not meant to be an entire sort of game engine replacement as the Blender game engine was sort of seen as before. So currently in Blender 2.79, we still have a game engine version, which you can still make games in. However, in Blender 2.8, the game engine has been removed along with the Blender internal render engine. So if you want to keep using the Blender game engine or the Blender internal render engine, then all you need to do is keep using Blender 2.79, but you won't be getting any of the nice modern features that Blender 2.8 has got. So one subject that is mentioned a lot is the Blender Up BGE project. Uh, basically what that is is a bunch of developers from the original game engine decided it would be cool to go ahead and sort of make the game engine better, add new features and everything else, mainly because the central Blender foundation didn't really want to constantly have to update the new Blender game engine itself, as with every new release it was already sort of breaking whenever a new feature would be added to the rest of Blender. So the UpBGE team decided just to fork away the entire thing and do the updates themselves. The downside to UpBGE is basically that they've forked the entire sort of Blender code and then they've separated it completely. So if you want to get updates for the engine itself, you'll have to download them separately to Blender. And so if Blender gets an update, that will also again be separate to UpBGE itself. And if you want to start using models, using the new tools in Blender, and then also want to be using UpBGE, you'll almost need to be sort of modeling in the new Blender, exporting, and then using it in the old Blender. And at that point, you might as well sort of consider using another engine altogether, because you're essentially exporting and moving across to another engine and then using the things in there, which sort of defeats the whole purpose of Blender being integrated. So this leads me on to the next game engine, which is Armory 3D, and this engine is really modern, it's integrated inside both versions of Blender, the new and the old, uh, and it has all sorts of really cool new features, including ray tracing and global illumination, basically all of the cool stuff that the old version of Blender didn't have before. But the main thing behind it that makes it so great isn't just that it's integrated inside Blender, it's the way that the technology inside Armory works on your game. Basically, you write in a language called Hex, and what that does is it basically can recompile that entire code into a new language for whichever platform you are targeting. 
For example, if you're targeting HTML, it can take the code that you've written, convert it to JavaScript, and then push that out with your HTML executable. The same goes for any sort of mobile exports, desktop, console, um, basically anything that's available. So the core technology here just makes it so much easier to export anything and at the same time have it optimized perfectly for the system that you're running. Now the main downside to this engine is that it's not very old. The software itself still has issues, there's lots of things that it still needs to add to become properly production ready, and there's quite a few other things that are still work in progress. But it's definitely shaping up to becoming the biggest if not the best contender to all of the other commercial game engines. So the last engine I'd like to go over is the Godot engine. So this is a very popular game engine. It's mainly been used for the last few years just for sort of 2D games, but recently they've released a 3D version to um, yeah, basically allow you to make 3D games and all sorts of cool stuff with that. Now again, the downside here isn't only that it's not integrated inside Blender and you sort of still have to do the exporting and new materials and everything else, um, it also has the main problem that it's quite early in the days of its development. It has 3D, but the 3D hasn't been around long and there's issues with animations and just optimization and that sort of thing that still exists. So right now you might be asking, okay, what is the best open source game engine option if I want to make a game right now? And if you've just been using the Blender game engine right now and you want something new with some new features, then definitely go ahead and just go to the UpBGE branch. It will have everything that you need with extra features and it will just run much better and you'll already be accustomed to the environment. If you're looking for options in the future, I would suggest having a look at Armory 3D and Godot and considering your options and seeing which one is easier to use. Personally, I'm going to be keeping an eye on Armory, as this seems to be the most promising, but again, it will take some time before we find out exactly what the engine can do and what it's capable of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it was sort of just an overview of everything that's happening at the moment and why there isn't many Blender game engine tutorials. So if you'd like to check out any of those game engines, the links will be down in the description below. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.